Hello. Uh, we're going to do a Bible study today. I usually do either Bible studies or sort of exposés on different cultic people or doctrines or stuff like that. <clears throat> so today's going to be uh, something I, uh, I guess I've been a Christian for over 40 years. When I was first year <clears throat> as a Christian, some guy shared this with me. Never heard it before. And then uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to expound on it a little bit. I mean, I never heard it after. In 40 years, I've never heard anybody bring this up. So it's really cool. It's about Noah and the, uh, the, the raven and the three doves that he releases. So if anybody knows the story, uh, it's one of those nuggets, you know, uh, you know, this is what David said, and this is what I love to do, is just dig into the Bible and find the little gems, nuggets, and you go, wow, the stories hid within stories that tell part of this bigger story. And the bigger story is always the same, isn't it? It doesn't vary. So this is kind of confirmation, these these mysterious stories in there that, that uh, tell the same same old story. <clears throat> so this is going to start with G uh, Genesis 8. Uh, and this is after it had, the flood had come and everybody was drowned and they were just in the ark and the waters had stopped. Uh, so this is Genesis 8 verse 6. After 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven. And it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. So you got your raven. Let's see if I can make a little raven here. Little raven feet. So it goes back, the raven goes back over to the earth, it goes back and forth, and back and forth, until the waters have dried up, the waters of the flood. Put a beak on him, it's a little more ravenish. <clears throat> so you got your raven. Then he sent out a dove. <clears throat> he sent out a dove. Make the dove a little fatter. Send out a dove. Mine looks more like a duck. But he sent out a dove <clears throat> to see if the water receded from the surface, but the dove could find no place to set his feet <clears throat> because there was water all over the surface of the earth. So no place for his feet to land. It was all water, too much water. <clears throat> okay. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back into the ark himself. He waited seven more days, uh, seven days, and then he sent out another dove. <clears throat> and it came back in the evening. There was a in its beak, there was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So, send out dove number two. And when it came back, in its beak, there was the olive leaf. And Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again. This, but this time it did not return to him. Okay, so now he sends out the dove <clears throat> the third time. This dove is looking worse and worse. There's your dove. So now the dove the third time, and this time the dove found a place to light on the earth and did not return. <clears throat> so this is what this uh, gentleman shared with me about these the, 
this four birds, <coughs> and then I'll, I'll add to that. So the first one is, <coughs> there's one scripture in the Bible, so how do we, what do we do with scripture? We get scripture, and we uh, interpret scripture with scripture. South America, North America, there's Florida. <coughs> so, <coughs> in the book of Job, we find that the devil, Satan, comes to God, and and he's and God says to him, Where have you been? What have you been doing? He says, I've been going back and forth on the earth, back and forth, back and forth. And this is the only other scripture that talks about somebody going back and forth. So you got your Satan going back and forth. And then you've got another scripture in Peter that says that the, the, the devil is a roaring lion going back and forth, seeking whom he may devour. He's searching, 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 searching over the waters <clears throat> to find who he can devour. That's who comes forth first. <clears throat> <clears throat> that is, this is the fall. This is the fall of man. <clears throat> started by the devil and then he begins to this whole era all three of these eras we got three eras here one two three eras <coughs> and then in uh, this back and this the whole time this raven is going back and forth through these three uh, well these ra these doves are out the raven is constantly going back and forth, seeking him whom he may devour. <clears throat> so, uh, to know, no, we have a pretty much a universal thing about peace. It's a, the dove with the olive branch. The olive branch is what is peace. It's a symbol of peace. <clears throat> So we have in the middle this this uh, dove that's a symbol of peace. And what are these? <clears throat> What's the dove symbolic of in the Bible? A dove is symbolic <clears throat> of where's my rag, my wiper. <clears throat> Got a big one today. <clears throat> The dove, the raven, the raven, <clears throat> is a symbol of Satan, <clears throat> and the dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. We have that in Matthew where the, the dove ascends upon Christ's baptism. It's a, it just says this dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit anointing him. <clears throat> so you've got two characters. The character of Satan and the character of the dove. <clears throat> and Satan, in this, Satan comes forth one time. He spends his whole time going over the water. <clears throat> and what is the water? In Revelations, it says the water, uh, the water of the oceans, which is this, this, this rain had covered the whole earth, the waters of the oceans, the waters of the oceans are in constant turmoil and flux. They're moving, they're <clears throat> they're changing things, they're destroying things. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so there's two verses. There's several. There's lots of verses about the about the water being people. In Revelations, it says the the waters are people and nations. It's the it's the lost world. It's the world of the lost, I should say, rather than the lost world. <clears throat> the ocean is symbolic of the 
lost world. There's another verse that says that uh, <clears throat> the wicked are like the troubled sea, being tossed about. <clears throat> they are the troubled sea. In this, I, in this uh, metaphor, <clears throat> you've got your raven, Satan. He's traveling over the, the lost of the world. <clears throat> seeking who may devour the troubled, the lost, the, the, uh, those who, don't, who haven't found Christ. So what, what God does is he sends out, a, a, he's got a redemption plan. Here is, here is the fall, the, what happens during the fall. <clears throat> then he has a redemption plan. And this redemption plan is in three parts. <clears throat> One, he sends out his spirit. And it comes back, but it's, it doesn't accomplish anything. It just kind of a, <coughs> uh, there's an attempt, <coughs> but nothing is accomplished. Then there's a second attempt. <coughs> and in the second attempt, you have the, <coughs> uh, the peace symbolized by the, <coughs> by the dove that found some, a foothold in the ground. That is it, this <clears throat> this water had been dry, is starting to dry up a little bit. And now the, the olive branch comes to the, to the uh, <clears throat> ark. So that represents peace. So who is this person? This would be Christ, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, correct? And then the third. <clears throat> and then the third time the Spirit goes out, what happens is the restoration. The restoration of before the fall. This is about the fall, <clears throat> and this is about restoration. Is that on the board? Yes. <clears throat> Restoration is in three phases. Uh, so this is what this guy shared with me. <coughs> Excuse me. I thought this is really cool. <clears throat> so for years and years and years, I'm trying to figure out well, what are these phases. I can't. I know. I don't. Under, I don't really understand what one is. <clears throat> When did God do this? I understand the second one, the Christ coming, and the and the third one would be <clears throat> the new the new kingdom of God, kingdom of Christ coming. The last one. <clears throat> this one was always kind of a mystery to me. I couldn't really how do you plug that in there? <clears throat> uh, and that's just you know I've got that kind of uh, mind that's got to know stuff, so. About six years ago, six or seven years ago, I had a friend, Ronnie Wallington, still guy, good friend of mine, and he told, he just said something out of the blue <coughs> that just pulled this whole thing together for me. And what it was, he said that before Noah, <clears throat> and he got this from your genealogies. Genealogies, everything in the Bible is important. Then put there for accident <clears throat> or just to fill in space. <clears throat> the genealogies say, well, first there was Adam, right? And it says how old Adam was. And then there was uh, <clears throat> Seth was the only remain. Well, there's uh, Ab Abel was dead, killed. But there was Cain <clears throat> and Abel. It gives their it gives their uh, how long they lived. I'm not going to put all that stuff on there. <clears throat> and then it gives the genealogy of Cain his sons, and then his grandsons, 
<clears throat> and on and on and on. And it tells how long that they lived, right? And same thing with Abel. Not Abel. <clears throat> we don't know if Abel had children. I don't think he did. They're not listed. But you have Seth, the third son. <clears throat> so, third son of Abel, uh, Adam and Eve. So, same thing. You go on and on and on and just list their, 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 the dates, how long they lived. He lived X amount of years, and you can add all those years up <clears throat> until you get to Noah. So when you get to Noah, you know exactly, if you use the genealogies, how old, how long the, uh, the earth is and how long people have been on the earth. <clears throat> so what you're going to come from this conclusion is that there was people, <clears throat> there were people on the earth that knew <clears throat> somebody that knew Adam. <clears throat> so whoever, <clears throat> the very last person born before the flood, knew somebody, right, <clears throat> one of these guys, a great grandson, because it gives their dates of how, how long they lived. This person would be alive, and he could have talked to, to, to this person <clears throat> and known about Adam, that Adam was a real person, that this was what happened, uh, the devil showed up, uh, there was this the, the, the temptation, the fall, uh, <clears throat> how God had uh, uh, separated Cain and put the mark on him, and Everything knew this whole creation story and the fall story. So through word of mouth, everybody on the earth could have known the truth. It, so there was not, <clears throat> it was just one generation uh, away from, I knew a guy. Your uncle, not even you knew a guy, Your un everybody was... So completely related here, it was not like today where you've got your uh, uh, we don't really think of uh, people from uh, unless you're from Pakistan, you don't think of people from Pakistan or India or Russia as your direct relatives. They are, we're all human beings, but we don't think that way. In this scenario, everybody knew. Somebody was somebody's uncle or aunt or cousin. They, they, everybody was related and everybody knew this line. And everybody knew somebody in this line that knew the first guy. <clears throat> so these, of course, these stories are going to be uh, talked about and shared and people are going to know. It's going to be <clears throat> just common knowledge. Where did we come from? Who are we? Well, there was this guy, Adam and Eve, first. Everybody has their creation story. Well, this was the real creation story, and they really knew it. <clears throat> so, this was the first of the dubs. <clears throat> this is the light bulb that kind of went on my head. <clears throat> uh, so, the first one was uh, intimate knowledge, I would say, or personal knowledge. Personal knowledge. Everybody in the world had personal knowledge of the creation, the fall, of the devil, of what God had said for humanity to do. <clears throat> and the state of the world <clears throat> at the time of Noah was, it says that everyone, <clears throat> what does it say? Uh... Why did he destroy the earth? Because uh, every thought, that's right, it says every thought 
was only evil continually. Can't spell very good. <clears throat> so every thought of every person was evil continually. <clears throat> and this is from this a personal knowledge of who God was, what he wanted, what he had commanded, and what the first people had done, Adam, Adam and Eve, and Cain, in murdering his brother. Everybody knew the consequences of sin, the consequences of disobeying God, and everybody went, go, I don't care. Everybody on the earth, no one was seeking God, and God found one person, Noah. So what is this saying? What's this talking about? And the lesson this is, it's, a, it's about the nature of man. This is what this story of the, the doves, the underlying story of the doves and, the, and Satan is, is the doves and the raven <clears throat> is the nature of man. So one, he found one man and he was saved by what? Faith. He had faith in God. He believed God. He knew the story. He believed that he took it to heart and he followed God. <clears throat> he obeyed God and built the ark. So you have the first one. <clears throat> then the second one. Number two. <clears throat> Number two is. Is the Prince of Peace, the second dove, would be Christ. Okay, so he, the second dove, is the, the second chance. The first chance of redemption comes through personal knowledge of what had happened. People knew what had happened. They knew the circumstances. And they knew the consequences, and they chose to do the opposite. <clears throat> so now the second chance comes along, and Christ comes as a man. God comes as a man. <clears throat> and brings this message of peace, reconciliation with God. You can be reconciled to God through Christ through accepting Christ and his sacrifice, he came as a as to make peace with us, to make peace with God. <clears throat> through, through him we could have peace with God. So the Prince of Peace comes. So this uh, era is the era of faith. Nobody knows uh, <clears throat> I don't know Adam. I don't know anybody that knew Adam. I don't know. Anybody. There's no personal uh, story that I can verify <clears throat> through a human being. So now the era, because the era we're in now is is on faith. We just have to believe. I've never seen Jesus. I I've never talked to any of the apostles. I wasn't there when he was resurrected. <clears throat> I don't. No, for a physical fact, like the first, the number one group was, I do not know anybody that knows. And that everybody around me said, yes, I know, that's the story, that's true. Everybody would say it. Yeah, I know that story. My uncle knew Adam. <clears throat> or I knew him. <clears throat> so... Uh, This is by faith we have to uh, we have to accept uh, a, a, in Christianity everybody that's a Christian should know this we become saved by faith we are we are we uh, <clears> are <throat> taken out of this confusion of the world and Satan uh, the troubled waters uh, we are taken out of those troubled waters by faith in the actions of Christ. So it's completely by faith. <clears throat> now, uh, lots of people don't have faith. 
They don't. They, they make a choice, <clears throat> and uh, some are redeemed and some are not. The majority of the people are, are, are not redeemed. <clears throat> they do not choose this. So it's, what, once again, it's saying something about the nature of, of, uh, <clears throat> of faith and the nature of human, human nature. Human nature, really, the, the things we're talking about is human nature. Now, there's many, many people who knew Christ, who saw Christ, who <clears throat> saw him have, do miracles, and then some of these same people killed him, crucified him. They did not accept this as Christ as a, a, a way of redemption. And uh, there's some that saw it and some that don't see it. And a lot of people say, oh, I wish I was in the days of Jesus and I was walking around, I was talking to him. Well, that wouldn't have made any difference because some people would accept it, some people accepted him by faith and uh, others rejected him. They saw and they rejected <clears throat> Same thing up here. People knew and they rejected. Here they saw and rejected. And if they didn't see, we have now we have, you know, the, <clears throat> uh, the Holy Spirit and the Bible has come and it has informed people. They can accept this by faith or not, and many do and some don't. So it's, it's talking again about the nature that it's rejected, the, that this redemption is, redemption is rejected by human humanity. And so the third one is, uh, which once again, what I'm majoring on is the nature of man, is even more shocking. The third thing of redemption is, if you know your Bible, if you, everybody's heard pretty much heard the term, the word anyway, Armageddon. <clears throat> Armageddon is when Christ returns in a body, physical body, with the saints, <clears throat> and they destroy the kingdoms of this world. Armageddon is when the, the armies of this world, all the armies gather together to try to destroy uh, God's people, they're attacking, and they cannot, they're completely outnumbered, they can't win. <clears throat> and so, the Christ comes, destroys these armies, <clears throat> and sets up a kingdom on this earth. Sets up a kingdom on the earth. <clears throat> so, the kingdom of God on earth. So, during this time, it's called the millennium, which means a thousand years. During this thousand years, there's going to be everybody does not, God does not. Christ does not kill everybody. There are millions of people left. And those millions of people are going to be on the earth during, the, during this thousand years. <clears throat> and they're going to see regular people. <clears throat> they're going to see Christ and the saints, resurrected saints, people that have been raised from the dead. <clears throat> and these guys are going to be ruling over these other people, over humanity. <clears throat> and at this point, uh, Satan will have been bound. He's no longer running back and forth on the earth. He'll be bound. So God, God's going to release Satan, and what's that going to do? It's going to, what happened when Satan came to Adam? It revealed his, his real nature. It revealed what he wanted to do. Satan didn't make anybody do anything. He said, hey, you're being treated wrong. You're, uh, you deserve better than this. Uh, look, these guys are bossing you around. Uh, uh, you're, you, you have rights, too. 
or whatever his story is going to be when he gets here. <clears throat> so these people are going to rebel and try to overthrow the righteous one, the holy one, Christ. Somebody they can see with their own eyes and have had a thousand years of, uh, that's a, quite a long time, so many, many generations have been able to see that he is a benevolent God, that he's trying to do the best for them, that he's trying to uh, <clears throat> help them and guide them and lead them in godly ways. <clears throat> and they're going to reject that. So, uh, so then that's when he wipes the, the rest of these people out who have not accepted him, the rebels. And then it says the new heaven and earth, the new heaven will come down. And that's when the eternity begins. <clears throat> and man, God, it stopped dealing with man. But you see these, how these uh, things have been he, done. And what it reveals about humanity, <clears throat> people knew for a fact what the facts were, and they rejected it. It was secondhand. Uh, after Adam and Eve, people didn't see it. Adam and Eve saw it, and then they told that story. So they had a per. They, everybody knew somebody with personal experience that could t testify to the truth. <clears throat> then you had. By faith, and, and the majority of the world rejected that, whether they saw it or not, didn't see it. And then in the last one, uh, eyeball to eyeball with Jesus Christ and the saints, and Christ God in a resurrected body, saying, if you follow me, this is what you can have. I'm offering you this if you follow me, follow righteousness, follow God, and don't do your own thing. And they go, no, just with a little nudge, a little suggestion that you're not being treated right, <clears throat> off they go. So what this really just talks about is our, our, our human nature. We can't, we, no one can save themselves. No one can, uh, uh, everyone's got this me thing in them their desire to promote themselves or save themselves, protect themselves, and to protect themselves, they're willing to uh, step on other people or manipulate people or get other with others that manipulate people or they get in a group that they feel safe in. There's all kinds of ways to do that. <clears throat> and... Um, you know, become a Republican. If you're a Republican, you feel safe in that system. If you become a Democrat, you feel safe in that system. If you're a communist, you and you're an ardent communist, there's that system that you think uh, Bernie Sanders has got a system. He says that if you follow this system, it'll make you safe. That's just the political systems. And then there's the family system. There's the national system. There's the uh, there's the system of. Uh, uh, Anyway, there's all kind of philosophical and social systems in, in which people try to protect themselves and rather than get protected by the one that made everything and knows everything and knows all the rules. So anyways, uh, I hope this was interesting to everybody. And uh, like I say, it's just a little gem in there uh, that, that tells a story. It tells a, the story of the fall and the redemption of man by God and God alone. Okay, thank you.